Uh, it's episode three of the deep podcast, Dippy Egg Eater. I'm Efreed Eater. I'm uh, I'm Corey. Yeah, he's you know, not actually Dippy Egg. The whole the whole thing's a lie. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fake. I'm a fraud. Oh, <laughs> now I I'm done with this. It's chill, no, anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so we're here we're gonna talk about stuff and like stuff. things they're good it's it's good sometimes oh and, yeah uh yeah and i hope you tune in we we tried to restructure it after the the lost levels deep the lost levels which you'll probably see one day after, It'll, it, one of us will edit it eventually yeah we had to remake it with new graphics and like um, where they, you know, like it's in a deep all stars cartridge or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's just how it is, I guess. Sometimes, but no, but we'll at least that podcast is playable, unlike the real Mario Two. The real Mario, the lot, the Lost Levels version, the Japan only Mario Two. We didn't get until All Stars. Oh, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm in the minority with that. With that game, well, at least the original one. Wait, what? On you don't like the US? Huh? I have I have Mario Two. It's right there. No, US Mario Two is good. Like you know, like the one that was originally WWE Pan. That one's good. But I'm saying that the one oh. you just showed me, the Famicom Disk System version, yeah, <laughs> isn't no. very good because no, the, no, because <laughs> the physics are like really scuffed and it, it's fine in like just su- Super Mario All Stars. They kind of fixed it, but. That version, yeah. I didn't know that. I don't really like the game in general, but um, I don't know. It's still kind of scuffed, but at least the physics aren't like intentionally bad, like they are in that. I don't have Mario All Star, so I have to like. I think I'm like sentenced to fifteen years in the brig or something. I really like Mario All Stars. It's a fun game, especially when it's a combo cart with Mario World five games. That's great. Four of them are good. Like, come on now. Yeah, yeah. That? No, that's great. <laughs> um, I have not been playing Mario All Stars lately, but awesome. I have been playing Persona Five because I'm always playing that for the last three mm-hmm. months. Almost going on four months, actually. It's very long. I'm at 120 hours almost. It's a very long game, and uh, there aren't really like side quests so much in those games. I mean, you could do it a lot faster, I guess, but yeah, it's just a long game. I don't know. That's fair. Um, well, I've been playing a few things. Actually, I guess I can, I was gonna say I wasn't gonna show this on the podcast, but by the time this podcast is out, it my video will probably be out. So watch my video on a dinosaur adventure on the PS2. Uh, I won't get too into it because I have a I'm gonna have a video all about it, and but you don't want to miss that because it's a it's a disaster. Oh boy. The main game I've actually been playing is um actually on my pickups alert alert. Uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two. Um, oh yeah, I saw you post about that. Yeah, when when I first played it, because I, I I'm a fan of the original too. I loved those games growing up. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, I was a fan of those games, but they added like a little pinch of realism to these games and. It made me mad at first. So I was like, I don't know if I like this, but I started to get used to it as I played it more. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm in the process of unlocking all the like, um, all the skate parks, and I got like maybe like three or four in one and two. Like, I haven't played a crazy amount. I played maybe like five hours worth. Mm. But as I get better at it, I am starting to like it more. Um, I mean, it is Tony Hawk, and you know, I, I got it with because for my birthday, I got um. A gift card, a GameStop for my boss. So I was like, yeah, I'll get, I'll get Tony Hawk. Sure, that sounds good. Because I was at this like giant mall on, on Sunday after the game convention, which we'll get into. But um, yeah, the giant mall was cool. I got that. I got camera equipment. I got them. But this was the highlight. This is Tony Hawk. Yeah, we got everybody has to wish Pori a happy birthday. Aww, thank happy you. birthday to you. Everybody has to sing along. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. All the people are singing. That's so copyright. Happy. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I don't know if it is. It wasn't. It wasn't like the nineties. Oh okay. no! I forgot. Don't sing happy birthday. Sorry, I didn't do it. DMCA have, play. have a good birthday. Yeah, have the birthday. Yep. Oh boy, the birthday. Yep, it's good. And the birthday is a joy. There, that's my new version of it. Um, there you go. Uh, oh yeah, and the one thing that made me upset about this game is that it's a ten gigabyte download to play it. Holy so, wow, that's big. Yeah, that's pretty big. I mean, it's not oh. as bad. Mortal Kombat Eleven is like a twenty gig download on the Switch. It's ridiculous. I still haven't played it yet because of that. Because I don't have an SD card yet. For well, I have an SD card with oh, like SD card. five gigs or something, but I, I want to eventually get like a big one so I can play Mortal Kombat. 11. Happy birthday to you! Actually, is. <laughs> No longer copyright. The copyright claim was declared invalid in 2015. I didn't know. That. Nice, they're so, free. I, I I read somewhere that like apparently it costs more to sing that song than it did to sing like the birthday song by the Beatles. Like I, I, that might not be true. Wow. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, I've been playing that. It's um, it's pretty fun, and I'm gonna start a. This game that my buddy got me soon, it's um he, he gave me the he gave me a download code for it, which I'm really excited about. It's um called like the flame and the flood or something. I don't oh, know if yeah. you heard of it. I have that on Steam. Uh that's it looks like a cool. raft. Yeah, yeah. I think so. But I, I got I it for free it. and my buddy gave it to me and I I, I gave him a code for carry and hopefully mm. that actually worked. I, it I worked for my girlfriend. Did. So it should work for you limited run one yeah yeah because i was like i don't yeah, need a digital yeah i, I got the physical yeah i think it came i don't remember i got it <laughs> um but yeah um i gave I, I was like i have this extra he gave me the code because he's such a nice guy and then i was like here I, here's a carrion code hopefully it works for you dude and hopefully it does and hopefully he enjoys it because i i haven't played the game yet but it looks good yeah i didn't play it yet either you buy from limited run and then you forget about it and then it oh, and yeah. then it gets here and then you're like oh yeah and then it's like you're playing something else already. I have one limited run game in my haul today. I have I a lot played. of them. Oh, well, I'm uh, excited for your haul. It's too big, but uh, too I will big. I will mention two big games. That's what they call that. It's a that's not even funny. But um, <laughs> I've also been playing LSD Dream Emulator with. My friends, mm -hmm. I had some friends come over, like two different friends, and I was like, "Oh, here you got to play this weird game." And you my have one, to try this game. Yeah, and my one friend knew about it, and my other friend didn't. Um, and it was fun, like in both situations, because it's uh, it's just like a game you can just sort of throw in, and it's just weird. Uh, yeah. I hope to beat it one day, but you you have to do like a lot of dreams, and I don't know how you know which dream you're gonna like how to like i assume there's sort of some method of like uh having the dream go into different areas that you want it to but i don't know what that is have you ever done a basement on dream emulator i'm assuming you probably did yeah that was um playstation basement like older one. yeah that was the first year i think i've been doing playstation basement in the console like period facebook group for this will be the third anniversary uh cool. beginning of september uh oh, i've been doing it actually since 2018 uh lsd was 2019 uh 10 26 2019 was yeah, okay. when i did that one Sounds right like after I did, time. right after d i did LSD. that's one of my most wanted PS1 games. And I feel like I could make a really banger Dippy Egg episode out of LSD Dream Emulator. It's just like, it's not like a $500 game or whatever. But it I know I can. More and more, yeah. It went crazy. I didn't yeah. Pay that much for it. Like, I'm, I'm going to wait until it goes back down again or unless I get lucky. Oh, but I can totally uh, empathize with the uh, idea of when you have friends over making them play really stupid games. Like, I well, do that I all the time when game, I have friends over. But it's just a oh, weird yeah. game. It's weird, but like weird or stupid, rather. Mm -hmm. Like you know, like I had a, like a, like my friend Andrew came over one day. This is a few years ago. He came over one day and I made him play like Wayne's World on Super Nintendo because <laughs> I'm a bad friend like that. I'm like, here, play this game. Oh, I did that with Heavy Nova. 
<laughs> it's like, hey, play this stupid game. <laughs> It'll be fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and there was this one time when, when my buddy Chris Bear came over, and, like, we were just playing random, like, Genesis games, but I kept making him play Dark Castle, like, every few games. I was like, here, here's Dark Castle. <laughs> Here's here's another game I might play soon, uh, Langrisser 1 and 2, which I got a really good deal on from Facebook Marketplace. Because um, this, like, went up a lot, which is really annoying because it just came out, like, a year ago. Like, Who published it? Uh, Nippon Ichi Software. NIS. NIS. This is the actual... It has, like, a reversible cover. So, like, the I game's need... in my Switch. So, like, that's... That's is it like an? I'm assuming it's like an RPG or something. It's you don't know about Langrisser. No, I don't. I've you know never about, heard of it. You know about War Song? Or not? Wait, no. Yeah, War Song on Genesis. War Song on Sam? No, I don't know that one. Uh, well, so Langrisser is like this pretty old like strategy RPG, tactical RPG, uh, and it evolved sort of into Grow Lancer. I don't know if you know about Grow Lancer. Oh. Um, so we never got the second one. This is the first two. Uh, we never oh, got okay. the second one in North America. Um, until that. Yeah. And I think there's like a third one, but like, whatever. I don't know. Uh, okay. Cause I don't really, I'm not too, uh, I mean, I'm still kind of new at the Sega Genesis. I mean, I know I have, like, 200 games for it, but, like, oh, wow. I'm still discovering, like, Genesis games. I'm like, this exists? Especially when it comes to, like, you know, like, RPG sort of games. Like, you know, obviously I know the Fantasy Stars. I know, and as far as tactical, the only tactical RPG I can think of is uh, the Shining Force series. And there's, like, mm. Shining in Darkness, which is, like, a dungeon crawler. There's a... Uh, mm. I have, like, this game called King's Bounty. I think that's a strategy game. I don't remember. Mm. It's on the Genesis, and it looked like a it looks like a strategy game. King's There's Bounty. There's some other that ones. Sounds... Like Gemfire, Genghis Khan 2. Those are, like, the Koei strategy games. Oh, yeah, those Koei things are... I, I kind of run away from Koei games, because oh, like, like... they're really... I mean, I probably would like them if I got into them, but, like, they're just... From an uh, from an outsider standpoint, they're really complicated to me. I'm like, oh, what am I doing here? The the really good intro for Koei is Romance of the Three Kingdoms Ten on PS2, because it plays more like an RPG, uh, and you don't really control like a whole army necessarily. You only control you. Uh, if you decide to take some kind of land or you start as like a ruler, you do control yeah. an army, but you can just start as like you. And you just walk around and like you can oh, like okay. work for somebody if you want. So you can work for Lu Bei or you can work for Ma Chao or you can work for Cao Cao or somebody. And some of those oh, names God. I definitely pronounced incorrectly. But... I have a Romance of the Three Kingdoms game for the PS2. I don't think it's 10. I think it's like 8 if I'm not mistaken. Well, that one's also kind of like an RPG. I didn't like that one as much, okay. but that's the first one I had actually. It's like blue. Because I, I, don't, I don't remember because I got it in... um. Remember back when, like, you know, like, Kohl's would have, like, three packs of, like, PS2 games yeah. for, like, $20. Like, it was like that. It was, um, it was, I think it was this game called, um, it had a really Japanese name, but it's like a, like, a tank strategy game. It's called, like, oh, Dai, Dai Sen yeah, yeah. Senriku or whatever. It's, like, the seventh entry of that or something. Yeah. There's that one, and then there was, um... This really, hmm. The PTO. No, it's not PTO. It's um, it's like this really crappy like third person gun game. That's um. Like Trigger Man. It's called. Or something? No, it's called the Plan, and like the word <laughs> the has like a three instead of an e. It's just like it's plan. really bad. It, the Plan. If Somebody you go didn't to, like, a have game a story, plan. Uh, you'll probably find that. a copy of the Plan for like. For like three dollars, like it's still a three dollar game despite PS2 inflation because it's just such a stupid game. <laughs> I might do a video on it just to make fun of it. Yeah, but yeah. It's the plan and it's a. Uh, I don't know if I can. Oh, I'm not gonna dig through two hundred PS2 games right now, but it's it exists. It's called the plan. Or Damn. Here are the T -H -E other the other plan. PS2 romances. I have the one. I have the one that. I have seven. Seven. You have seven? I have seven. I've never seven. played seven yet. Uh, I've played eight. And okay. I have not played eleven. 
11 it goes back to the traditional style. 7, I guess, is more like that, too. And they always say 8 is more like an RPG. I I sort of agree, but I, it's not as much like 10. Like, 10 is cool. You can do, like, duels, and you can do, like, debates with people, and it's, like, this, like, battle thing. It's, I don't know, it's really fun. My friend actually beat it. It took his was character not. was like 110 at the end or something. He drank these like elixirs of immortality <laughs> or something. And it was like this epic like battle of attrition. It was him and South Tower just like fighting at the end. And then eventually he won. And it was like he was like, finally, like I won. A big he, question. Where's no, where's number nine at? Uh yeah, I don't have that one. Ooh. I forgot about that. You got like seven, eight, ten, eleven. Yeah, but I, um, yeah, those are um, yeah. That's something I want to like. The strategy genre in general is something that I'm like, I should get more into this, but I know it's like a big learning curve. I know my one buddy; he's into the one Koei game. Um, my friend Andy Hine, he streams on Twitch. He's a Mario Kart legend. Um, he stream. He like really likes the. Uh, there's like a Koei game that's based on like America. It's called like Liberty or Liberty Death. Or Death. Yeah, he he really likes that game because he's like a he's like a history buff. So, yeah, that's always um that's something that I I think actually there was like a year where we were at too many games and we were actually looking for Liberty or Death for him for like a good price, which is like weird. We're probably the only people to ever go to a game convention no, and look for that game. I we well, need I, Liberty or Death. <laughs> I that's funny, but I did that at the Pittsburgh Gaming Ex Pittsburgh Retro Gaming Expo. I was talking about before the podcast. I went and I was looking for some kind of Koei game. I don't know if I had a specific one in mind. And I went in yeah. and I talked to this guy. I was like, he's like, what are you looking for? I was like, I'm looking for some like Koei games. And he was like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, what? Yeah. He's like, no, you, you got to go somewhere else. Like, I don't have anything. We don't, we don't deal on that stuff. We don't deal with <laughs> Koei here. Yeah. Uh, but I got Genghis Khan 2 there, which is oh, okay. a Koei game. I think uh, I think the following year actually like me and him were were on the prowl for uh, North and South too. So oh, like, I since two years ago. I mean, granted, I've been I've been on the hunt for some weird games and too many games. Like the one like a few years ago, I um I think three years ago, I was like really adamant about finding a copy of Car Battler Joe for the Game Boy Advance. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I really wanted, on I eBay. couldn't find it. I couldn't find it anywhere at the convention. Like everyone who had GBA games had like the basic gba games like oh here's mario advance actually that year i got a a not for resale copy of mario advance one like one of the ones that would be like playable in the game boy advance kiosk things i mean it's literally just the game but it has a different label but it's yeah, so yeah. cool and huh. it was like cheap like it was like the same price as a regular copy so i was like yeah i'll just so i can say i have a not for resale copy but i was i spent the entire weekend looking for car battler joe like even to the point where I was asking people, and they're just like, "What the hell is that? What's Car Battler Joe?" And then I, uh, literally on the last day, like, like literally the the convention was about to close on the last day, like in an hour. I I go to this booth that I was at like five times throughout the day, and he put out some more games. He puts out Car Battler Joe. I'm like, <laughs> there we go. We, he I heard you it. talking about it. Yeah, I was like really excited. I'm like, hell yeah! And that game is awesome. That game is so one of the best Game Boy Advance games in my opinion. I love that game. So I was yeah. really happy to find that, and I'm glad I got it then because I'm pretty sure like resellers like made it blow up because uh, it's it's a, it's a hit gem, now. you know. It's pricey. Yeah. It's not even that. Common. I mean, I, it's it is it is genuinely a pretty hard to find game. I mean, that's the only copy I've ever seen of it in person. So that says something considering I see a lot of games, but yeah. it's but like back then, like uh, even back then, I think I paid like forty dollars for it, which. I don't know. I which, like is about what, which is about yeah. I think this was about when it was like a sixty dollar game, so I did get a good deal on it. But... I think mine was when it was like eighty, so it was I yeah, yeah. I also got it a little. So I got a, I got a good deal on it, so I was happy and like it is not like I'm like oh the value you know I just the value. it's legitimately a really good game. Like that was before Natsume jumped the shark. <laughs> oh no, well that's a it's a different not it's a different Natsume. What? But there's two Natsume. There's, there's Natsume that. America and there's Natsume Japan. And Natsume America. I think Natsume Japan isn't called that anymore or something. Okay. So it's like this weird thing. I don't know. 
Well, which one? Which one made Harvest Moon? Because that's why I know Natsume well, for. I don't. Nats- Natsume USA was just their American like distributor, originally. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. So then they became their own developer later because they basically the Japanese arm like disowned them so, or something, and then like the American yeah. branch like just became its own developer and publisher. Oh, okay, so the, what was so already basically. Published? When Harvest Moon games started getting bad, that's when not that's when Natsume was like, oh, let's do it ourselves. You know, yeah, that's, just, yeah, that's what crappy. it was. Because I know that was like like a big split between Natsume and the people who actually made Harvest Moon. And you know, they're like, Yeah, we don't need this stupid company. Plus, like every Harvest Moon game is be- is like done in barely any runs. Like, you know, just good luck finding a copy of uh another wonderful life or more friends of mineral town out there. I need to pop up, but it's not nearly as common as like, you know, animal crossing or something. Right. Thankfully I have, and I'm actually going for a whole harvest moon set. And some of those early harvest moon games are like the tough to find. Like, Oh yeah. The first one is the most expensive game I've ever bought. So <laughs> it's oh. says something. Yeah. It's, um, but the first one, well, the, to be fair, the first one came out and like, I want to say it came out in like 1997 or something. It's a really late Super Nintendo. It, release. Yeah, it's really late. Like it's a really late release, so I can understand why it would have not a lot of copies made. But also, it's the first entry in a legendary series, so that also. But I, I got really into that. Like I think the only Harvest Moon games I'm missing at this point are um, the first one on Game Boy, black and white Game Boy, and um, mm. Do I'm you missing have the Game like, Boy Color mm- ones and the Game Boy ones. Like they're like the yeah. same game, but they're like in color. Whatever. I have the first one that was they re-released the first one on the Game Boy Color because it was called Harvest Moon GB, but then they released mm-hmm. Harvest Moon GBC, and it's like the same. I have GBC, mm-hmm. but I don't have GB. And then they did like there's like freaking like thirty Harvest. Well, not thirty, but there's like a lot of Harvest Moon games on the DS. No, it's have, crazy. Like, um, like there's a lot, and then Story of Seasons is another story. I'm missing like two story of season games because i've been keeping up with it like i have the dorimon one which only got a physical release in japan and europe we didn't get the physical of that but it is on oh, the yeah. e-chat i was looking for that and i was like where did it go like like where is it yeah. i am i imported the the european version of that just because i'd have it's, it's a fun game i like it it's it's kind of handholdy since you know it's like a kid's property right but, it's still fun, and then like obviously I have Pioneers of uh, Pioneers of Olive Town, a new one, which kind of disappointed me, but I do gotta play it more. I got like the fancy edition in the big box. You can kind of see it. Uh, wait, can yeah, I yeah, I I got it in the other thing. We 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 showed it. The one I got. it's on the top of this. Yeah, that's and it has like the little like thing. And then yeah. I mean I'm kind of crazy with heart. Yeah, the little yak. I'm like crazy with Harvest Moon though, like. Because when One World dropped, which I still haven't played yet, but I'm assuming it's probably not very good. Hmm. I was, I bought a, I bought the diorama from <laughs> Limited. <laughs> oh, means... I rem- yeah, yeah, I thought about that, but I was like, nah. It's still on there because <laughs> they didn't sell. Uh, no I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's weird. It's a, it's a cool diorama. Don't get me wrong, but it's. I only I wouldn't have gotten it if I wasn't like a rabid Harvest Moon fan. <laughs> mm. Harvest Moon or Well, I mean I mean obviously the new Harvest Moon games aren't good, but just because of the namesake, I still am buying them just so I can keep up. Like I bought Light of Hope first day. I actually didn't know Light of Hope was happening until I saw like I signed for it in GameStop and I was probably like the only person in the United States that pre order that game. They do it like cow. every couple months. It feels. Like. I got a cow out of it though. It's somewhere back there. Oh, we have the pig the from one have... of the three DS ones. I don't have the pig. I have the cow from Light of Hope. I have the cow from Friend, uh, Friends of Mineral Town, the Story of Seasons remake. Mm-hmm. It's like a strawberry cow. Um, Friends of Mineral Town was a freaking. Ma- I love that game. It was a masterpiece. Because I, I love the original, so it was. I, I have the remake. Have... Yeah. Yeah, the remake's a lot of fun. And then I have the diorama from uh, of One World, which uh, no, that also came with like a chicken plushie. Uh, you can you can kind of see oh, the chicken I've plushie seen. like up there. You can see him up there if I'm pointing at him right now. Yeah, that's yeah. a chicken. And, uh, <laughs> so I got the chicken plushie, and then I got the yak plushie from uh, Pioneers of Olive Town. And Pioneers of Olive Town also has like a like a mat or something in it. I forget what it was. Yeah, it's like a map or something i don't know what it is yeah 
Oh, did you I, get I the 20th anniversary out, mini cow figure? No. Is that a thing? It's on their YouTube. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Harvest Moon is just like... It's it's fun. It's a fun series. I, I, I really like it. Yeah. Or what it used to be. And I like Story of Seasons. So, uh, what happened since the last podcast? There was E3. Everybody is already E3. done with that, though, right? Yeah, um, E3 is. But, I mean, we could still talk about some of the stuff we like from E3. I mean, most I of it wasn't really... I didn't watch it. But I, well, I, watch it. I, I heard stuff. You, st- you know, you hear stuff... Because everybody name a company and I'll give name a company and I'll give you a recap. Uh, Cap- <laughs> well, I I know some of it. Like, I mean, I saw Squares, I saw Capcom. Like, okay, uh, like Squares, that. they Squares. Ooh, look, they just a bunch showed the Final Fantasy yeah. remakes and that we've already like, had only on mobile and Steam. Yeah. Um. Although the hack and slash Final Fantasy game looks kind of fun. That might be sort of. I I I I disagree, <laughs> but I. Do- don't know. I'm not saying it's gonna be like groundbreaking. I'm just saying that if I if I found that in a Walmart bin for ten dollars, <laughs> I would buy it and I would have fun with it. <laughs> that that's fair. No, I would do that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't pay like sixty dollars for it or anything. As for Capcom, uh, Monster Hunter esports. Yeah, Monster Hunter, and they were oh, like, okay. oh, look at this esports. Look at look at this guy who can play Street Fighter. It's like who cares? Like this is E3. This isn't. Evo, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I care oh, about yeah, Street Fighter DLC for Village. I mean, I like Street Fighter, but I just I'm not watching E3 for like esports coverage. <laughs> it's it's kind of weird. You just want like new, like here's a new game or something, right? But, yeah. And um, they didn't really deliver like anything. Like it was like Monster Hunter, and like Monster Hunter was shown at the Nintendo Direct too. Like, right? They didn't really need a Capcom slot. Uh, it, I felt like Nintendo's of the ones I heard about and like sort of watched. I watched like bits of stuff. I felt like Nintendo's was actually pretty strong because they announced oh, Metroid Nintendo's Dread, strong. and then it sold out immediately. And I reported people on eBay who were jerks. That's um, it. Because they're breaking yeah, the true. eBay rule. Like don't don't pull. It's like I can do it, but 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 it's like I don't it's care. Capitalism. It's capitalism. I mean, it is, but it's like it's. That's not the argument you think it is, it's, dude. <laughs> you can't like literally it's against eBay's rules, so I don't know, yeah, just exactly. too bad, man. Like plus it's like really shady to do that. Like it's Yeah, because by the time they by the time they get the item, like by the time the item is in their possession, the person can't leave negative feedback. So what's stopping yeah. this person from just like not shipping it, you know? Well, I think you'll still yeah. get it. I had a crazy situation I, where this guy didn't ship me something for like three months. And yeah. I kept talking to him about it, and then eventually he did. And yeah. I, I I didn't believe him, because it didn't say it shipped right away, so I was like, yeah, right. And I, like, and I was already trying to report him, and I didn't understand how. So then I did, but then it actually arrived, and I just wrote refused on it. I didn't know what to do. Like, I, I had never really returned stuff to eBay before. So I actually yeah. felt bad that he shipped it, but it was just like, like why did you wait, like, three months yeah. like and string me along? It was, mm-hmm. it was really weird. And then that guy lost his account. Because he, like, I assume it happened with multiple people. I found ra- other yeah. records of it. Yeah, it's not, it's not worth it. But yeah, Nintendo's was definitely strong. Because, I mean, Metroid Dread was the main event for me. Because mm-hmm. it was just like, because I'm watching it, and they're like, they mentioned, oh, Metroid Prime 4 is still in development, but we don't have anything to show you guys. So I'm like, yeah, typical. And they're like, but we have this one. And I'm like thinking, like, okay, you know, maybe it's a, like, Super Metroid remake, something like that. Then it says Metroid 5. I'm like, Metroid 5. Oh boy, this is sick. And then it pops up on the screen, Metroid Dread. I'm like, what? This game that they announced like 20 years ago exists? <laughs> like, it was like, I was like, oh my god, it's a real thing. Like, I was so, it was hype. And it looks really good to boot. Did they announce it a long time ago? Metroid, Metroid Dread was supposed to come out on like the original DS. Like, it was like. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, they were, they, and it was going to be like a side scroller, like sort of a sequel to Fusion, and uh, it was supposed to come out on the original DS, and then they just kind of silently like stopped talking about it, and everyone assumed it was canceled. Like it's one of those games where, like, like I mean, my sense of humor, like when I'm like talk when E3 is about to come up, I'll always make a joke like, "Huh, is Mega Man Legends three gonna be here? You know, is this game that's 
definitely not going to happen going to be here. And there have definitely been years where I was like, <laughs> is Metroid Dread going to be at the event? I should have made that joke this year because it would have been extra funny because it, it actually was at the event. But yeah, Metroid Dread was supposed to come out in like 2004 or something. What did you want to see at E3 that you didn't see? Or that you did? Um, what did I really want? Star Tropics 3? That's my, always my weird wish. This thing. Yeah, sure. But that won't ever happen. Um, honestly, I didn't really... I was at, I'm at this point where, like, I have so many games that, like, whatever they announce is cool. Like, Metroid is, yeah, like, yeah. expectations already. Plus, there's other cool games. Like, uh, the Mario Party looks very good. Um, oh, yeah, that looked decent. Yeah, Mario Party looked really good. Uh, you know, then there's, like, you know, Breath of the Wild 2 looks cool. It looks good. Uh, what else was announced? I don't even remember. Oh, WarioWare. That was a big one. WarioWare was very Oh, yeah, hard. I was excited about that because I like that series a lot. Oh, I love WarioWare. That was, a, that was probably one the second best announcement, in my opinion, besides Metroid. You know? I but was cool. hoping they would... In, what? Go ahead. Oh, no, Sim WarioWare is a big one. I was hoping... I really didn't think they would, but I was, I was like, maybe they'll do it. I really want a new F-Zero. Maybe they'll do a WarioWare. <laughs> and, well, sure. But I really want a new F-Zero. And, like... Oh, yeah. But they basically said they won't do it because they want to incorporate some kind of, like, new feature to it, even though I honestly could think online racing would be a new enough feature. And mm-hmm. it's pretty unique series. It's sort of like Wipeout, but it's a lot less simulation-y than Wipeout. Like, Wipeout is arcade but it the cars feel more like... like I mean, they're floating, but, like, they feel more like they have physics and stuff, like you... Yeah. Like, that I expect. Yeah. And it I'm is... A, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm, I was going to say, I'm of the opinion that um, with F-Zero, what they could do is remake gx like make a remaster of gx to like look modern add mm-hmm. online play add aspects from ax that wasn't on the oh GX. yeah and then add and add a modern version of the course editor from f-zero x on the n64 mm-hmm. e. if they made that a package i bet that would sell pretty good and i would be really excited for that no that that's worthwhile because like uh, like obviously the gamecube didn't even sell that well so yeah. I'm sure a lot of people missed out on that title. Like I didn't have it because I didn't have a GameCube. I have it now because I, I, I feel like I saw it at, at Goodwill or something. But maybe that was just the strategy guide. I got the strategy guide at Goodwill. It's a fun game. It's it's really solid, and I feel like just the how, the fact that it's that game and you're able to play online for the first time. I feel like that would be a selling point on its own. That might be difficult for them because it was like Capcom or. It Sega. was Sega, Namco, Nintendo, Team Up. Was Namco involved? Yeah, at least with the arcade one. Uh, I don't think Namco was involved in GX though, and I, I mean Nintendo and, Sega's, Nintendo and Sega's working relationship is so good. I mean, we got Sonic, so- Mario, and Sonic at the Olympic game that didn't actually happen in real life last year. So, like, oh, that's true. Awesome. Uh, so it's not like it's not like Nintendo could be like, "Hey Sega, you want to do this again?" And Sega would be like, "No." Sega would probably be like, "Okay, I'm not. We're not doing any other games anyway." Okay, yeah. Uh, Namco is just the arcade, which I, I yeah, played that and I had a lot of trouble with that. But... Well, the thing with F Zero AX is like, like the arcade of that is like insanely rare. Like I think there's only like ten documented machines that exist oh. in the North America. They have one at this arcade convention in Pittsburgh uh, when I went two years ago, but it's over. Like, they don't do it anymore because they yeah. sold all the machines. Like, I guess they. I don't really understand how conventions work in terms of finances, but, like, because they couldn't do it, like, they lost a lot of money or something. So they sold all the machines. Well, they well without the. I mean, they make a lot. Conventions do make a lot of money. Like, there's people who attend, and like, the people who like, you know, the vendors got to pay for each day they vend there and stuff. And uh, it, it's there's a lot, a lot of meat on those bones. Plus, yeah, there's like, yeah. Uh, but then again, they also pay like the the pan. I'm assuming they pay the panelists, <laughs> and then they pay like oh. uh, well, like the YouTubers rather. 
Well, there are no YouTubers at that, but yeah, so there are bands though. So they probably pay the bands. Um, yeah. But there are a lot of vendors at that too, like a lot of local places and some places from out of state. It was a really yeah. cool convention. It was called Replay FX. And they would have like hundreds of arcade machines, hundreds of pinball machines. It was mostly pinball, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, it's organized. It was organized by Papa, which is pinball something PA. Like, I don't know what it is. Pinball Association of Pennsylvania or something. That's probably what it is. Because there's another place called Pinball PA that's also over here, but it's like a business. So. My kind of business. It, it's a pinball place. You go in, you pay like 20 bucks, you can play all day. Oh, that's cool. I like. I mean, I love pinball. I would love to have a pinball machine. They have arcade that's machines cool. there, too. I'd love an arcade machine, too. Well, I have, a, I have the Mega Touch. That's kind of an arcade machine. I have the Astro City Mini. That's it. Hey, those uh, are sick. I, I, was, I considered getting it. Well, are you going to get the new one that I don't remember what it is? The Taito uh, one? Probably not, but I mean, I, 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 if I had extra money, I would. <laughs> I have to get the Taito one. I love Taito a lot, so I have to yeah. get the Taito one. Speaking of Taito, I'm still waiting on the Space Invaders Forever from whatever that... Oh, strictly God. Limited or... Strictly Limited. Uh... One of those. One of the ones that's not limited run. Yeah. Super rare, maybe. I think it's Strictly Limited. It's the, They did this. Yeah. They made this. Which this is okay. I'm okay with this. Cute. I'm not I super like... happy about this, but I'm okay with it. I like Space Invaders though. That's I'm gonna well, I want to get my first arcade machine, even though I have no place to put it. <laughs> like late last year, I came very close to buying an Arch Rivals machine, but I had no way to transport it, and that's like my biggest regret. Well, there was a free Double Dragon machine at one point around here, Ooh. but my friend, I was like, "Do you want to go get this?" It was like a friend I used to play Double Dragon Two with when I was little. And he was yeah. like, kind of. And then, but we just like didn't. Like, he didn't. I don't drive, and like, he didn't really have a way to to use the car. Like, they, his like family wouldn't let him use their car, and he like didn't have a car. So we had no way to get it. And we were like, man. Well, my goal. Well, I mean, I, I drive, but my car is like really tiny. So, like, an arcade machine 100% would not fit in there. So, what I'll probably do eventually is. The next time, like, a really cheap arcade machine pops up, I'll see if somebody's down to help me and will, like, rent, like, a U-Haul for $20 and, like, mm. just quickly take it home, drop the U-Haul back off at the place, and hopefully they won't charge us too many stupid fees. Oh, no, they're pretty cheap. If you get, like, because you could even get a smaller one, it'd probably be, like, 20 bucks. Yeah, I would just get, like, a tiny one. I mean, I don't need, like, a big, like, <laughs> tractor trailer to transport an arcade machine. Like, even just, like, one of their, like, trucks. Like, one of yeah. their, like, a. Uh, Pickup trucks would probably fit an arcade machine in it fine. Yeah. So other... just want... going back to news. Uh, news. News. Yeah. So there's this. Do you follow like tabletop gaming at all? I assume you don't, because I asked about D and D or something before. I don't, but I am interested in getting into it. Yeah. Well, we'll do that at some point. I I yeah, will ask that'd about be that. Sick. Wait, I would knew... the world thing coming up we're gonna play star wars the rpg and i maybe i'll ask yeah. you about that i don't yeah, know if you want to do that but we'll we'll talk about it but i was I'm gonna interested. say cool but the uh so the original D D company was tsr and there's like this big weird controversy right now where there's like a, a new tsr like so tsr hasn't existed for like 25 years almost yeah as like an independent company like it was purchased by wizards of the coast who make magic the gathering in, yeah, I think in 1997, that might be wrong. And uh, so like they owned it as like just sort of a brand for a little bit. And then they just sort of like. Uh, could, like, you know, like added like it just like those properties just became like part of Wizards of the Coast. Like they didn't call it TSR anymore. Yeah, but they they let the trademark lapse and then this guy bought it. Uh, and they started doing a, a magazine named after the creator of D&D called Gygex Magazine. It was pretty cool. I have all the issues. There were only like six. Because then yeah. the creator of D&D's like, widow had some issue with it. And she put a stop to it. She's really not very well liked in the industry. Because she 
is like very overprotective of like his name, like to the point that like she doesn't let like his children use it to like market games. Ooh. Um, so it's like really weird. But one of his children made this new TSR without anybody else like without his other son who like they're like the main people who work on RPG stuff like yeah. in that family he didn't tell him anything about it i guess and this new TSR has like i don't i'm not going to like dwell on this topic cuz like obviously you don't yeah. have much input on this and i'm not trying to say it's, so, it's an interesting story though so i'm actually really interested in hearing this well what happened is the new TSR has no connection with really any of the old like the real like old people who worked at TSR. Yeah. But they kept saying they did. And they were like, oh, like this guy is working for us. Like this guy, James Ward, who I have several of his games, Gamma World. And they were like, he's working for us. And he's not, he's not an employee of theirs. He, he sold them a game he made called giant lands. That's like this post apocalyptic, like fantasy game, which yeah. is kind of like some of the games I have from him. But it's it's like a little different, I guess. It looks kind of neat. But like he sold it to them and they were saying like, well, he works for us. And it's like he does that. Yeah. And like this artist, Jeff D, did some art for them. And they're like, he works for us. And he's like, I don't work for them. I'm a freelance illustrator. So he was like upset because now they're telling people like he works for me. They He works for us. And he's like, well, what about the other clients? Like they're going to think I work for this company. And then... The one son of Gary Gygax, he has, he's actually Gary Gygax Jr., basically, his name. Yeah. People call him Ernie because technically Gary Gygax is Ernest Gary Gygax. This guy, they just call him Ernie. Um, He was on a podcast and he said this remark that was really in poor taste. He said several things that were really in poor taste. And he said yeah. something like, we're making this for people that don't care about gender identity or something and it was like why would you uh, like the heck is wrong with you and uh, like, so he's one of those types who's like i hate sjw's like he's one of those sort of types i have no idea what his actual politics are i played a game with him and he was really nice but that i mean you know what is that yeah you aren't gonna be like playing like a tabletop game with someone being like so uh what are you what are your thoughts about the the social climate and stuff <laughs> Right, so I have no idea what his actual politics are. Like, they don't seem uh, like they are decisions made with care for other people, is what I'll say. Um, the main problematic figure in the new TSR seems to be this guy named Justin Lanasa, who... I'm not going to say this... I started calling him a bad nickname. I'm not going to say it on here because I'm sure he'll try to do something to me because he already did. Basically. Um, he's very, very vindictive and he's very, very, um, he wants to control like everything. So I'm in all these, they, there's a thing called OSR old school revival or old school Renaissance. It's like people wanting to make games that resemble old D and D games or like old other old games. Yeah. And, uh, I'm not like solely devoted to that or anything at all, but I'm in a lot of those groups because I do like that stuff. Mm -hmm. And he started going in all these groups and being like, you can't call yourself old school TSR gamers. You had to like change your name. You you can't use the TSR logo in your, in your banner and all this stuff. And, like he was like, and he was like posting all these groups. Like he, like, like he was posting like announcements from new TSR like they were yeah. like group announcements and it was like really weird. And he posted in this group for a game called star frontiers that I like, I've actually never got to run it, but it's actually, I have an interesting story about it. I got it at my grandma used to work at the thrift store that was down the street and they wouldn't, they didn't want to sell it. Cause I, I guess they associated it with like questionable things. They were, they were like very religious like, in a way. Oh, it was like, like this game. This game is worshiping Satan, like one of those type yeah, of things. It's weird. I don't, I don't know, but it's it's There's a space it's, in this game. It's a space game. It's like Buck Rogers or something. So it doesn't even have demons or anything in it. It's I don't know, whatever. But There's they, science in this game. <laughs> well, they gave her this copy, and it was actually like unpunched and everything. So I had like this new copy, and it got That's slightly cool. messed up. 
I've had it for like a long time now, like 16 years or something. But uh, they actually gave her an Intellivision at one point too, but I didn't test it out right away. So she like took it back or something. And I, I think about that all the time, like, Ugh. but I have one now. So it's like, oh, okay. But for a second, it was like, Ugh. all the time. Like, I, mean, I just like, I'll go to like a random flea market. I'll just see an Intellivision there for like 10 bucks. I'll be like, I already have like five of you. I'm sorry. I never, <laughs> like, I never see them. I've only seen like one, uh, really, and it was a Sears video arcade that I have, or whatever. So many. I have like five television systems, and then I have like, I have half of the library. I'm halfway to a full set. I probably won't like try to get a full set unless like it falls on my lap, but I do have like half of it. And like I even have like a bunch They're of really sealed cheap. television <laughs> games because they just pop up all the time. Like. I'll buy like an Intellivision with like ten games for like ten dollars. They, they always have a bunch of games. When I bought mine, it had like twenty five or something. Oh yeah. And some of them were kind of like rarer titles, like Dracula. Uh, and oh, they Dracula. Were all, yeah, Dracula's hard to find. They were all complete too, so it was that's cool. Great. I think they yeah, were that's also what I noticed with Intellivision games. A lot of times, like I'd say, probably half of my collection is complete games. Like that and um the Odyssey too. Like. Yeah, you yeah. always find those games complete. I guess because the boxes complement like the idea of like pulling it off the shelf and like opening it up and like has like a little little yeah yeah inside and you take the game out like because with Atari it's just like oh it's a game in a box whatever same way and the boxes game. are kind of bad for Atari they're kind of bad for Intellivision too but at least uh you know That's I have an true. Intellivision box I um, have a bunch right here I'm like not... we have we have Kool Aid Man well Actually, I don't have that one. Example. A bad oh, example. That's a bad example. It's like just a game in a box, but um, what's a good example? Um, bowling, like, see, like, because it has like the right. sort of I like mean, this the, is the Odyssey flap, too. Like, it opens yeah. up, and Odyssey Two has the same case. The flap yep. that opens up, the games is conveniently in there. There's a little like sleeve where the manual would normally go. Like, it's it was convenient, but like Atari is just like here's a box. It's like that Kool Aid Man game, but for all of them. Right, and they're all like different sizes slightly. It's Kind of annoying. I can't fit okay. my one game, and I can't fit summer games into a protector and stuff. I don't know. Off topic. Off topic question. Considering yeah. you showed me an Odyssey two game, since we're talking about tabletop games, do you own any of the Odyssey two board games? I have Quest for the Rings. I have Quest for the Rings, and I have a uh, Conquest of the World. The... Yeah, I have Conquest of the World. The, the Wall Street one's kind of rare, so I have. I don't have that one yet. But when I get the Wall Street one, I do want to make a video on those games just because there's a lot of funny skits to be had with playing a board game based on the Odyssey 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, back to TSR real quick. Like, so they were really misrepresenting themselves and they were saying, like, we're going to make a new Star Frontiers. And people were like, OK, you own the trademark, the Star Frontiers. You don't own the copyright. Wizards of the Coast owns the copyright. You can't just publish this material i mean you can make like you can use the logo but you can't use any of the actual material so like what do you like it's not even star frontiers at that point um and they were just doing that with like a lot of stuff they were like oh yeah this guy works for us like we're gonna do this and it's like you don't none of this is legit like you made everybody mad you now you're just lying they Somebody wanted to work for them, like an artist, like they want to do art, and they told them to sign a blank check. And it's like, no, like, what is wrong with you? Like, bro, they were just so like, it's sketchy. It's no, it's, the whole thing is sketchy. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, that, it sounds like a really sketchy operation from front to back. Like, it's just like, it'd be like if I like, if like the copyright for like, Atari expired and they just made like a really scam console for 400. Oh, wait, that happened. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it did, no, that's what I posted about. I said it's like the Intellivision Amico or it's like that or Coleco Chameleon. It's like, it's, yeah, it's like it's like what it's just they're like doing this. With Atari in general. Like, you know, like Atari has like the VCS, which is like this scam system, and then they were doing like cryptocurrency, the Atari coin or whatever, or Atari token. I guess they because of you know match the old yeah, S- yeah. arcade and the aesthetic. hotel and like, all that stuff. The hotel, the casinos, like the online casinos that are like gambling for the kids could do and so like it's just like Atari's. I, I want to eventually like 
five years from now do a video just talking about all the stupid things Atari did at the turn of the turn of the decade just because I don't think it's over yet, so I don't want to do it now. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other stuff with TSR then is like the guy, the main guy, I Ernie is like a main guy, but he, it seems like this guy, Justin Lanasa is like sort of like the, uh, you know, Ernie's the frontman. Justin's like the, the guitarist, like making all the compositions in the background. He's like the real yeah. manager. And uh, so he like got mad at everybody. I got banned from the Star Frontiers group for just saying like, why is this post in here? It sounds like it's a admin post. And then I found out a lot of other people did too. And we all joined like the inclusive Star Frontiers group. And it's like a much better, much more active group. Um, and it's like not run by TSR, who like weren't so even running the group. But... So basically, they're like Billy Mitchelling people, where like if you yeah. like criticize them even a little bit, they just like block you and get mad at yep. you and just like pretend like it doesn't exist. Well, and then they they started saying they were being targeted by Wizards of the Coast, like they got so they got banned by Gen Con and they got banned by. I think Gary Con, which is the convention for Gary Gygax. And they might yeah. not be banned, but they Luke Gygax was like, I don't want anything to do with this. And uh, they got banned by Origins. They got banned by all these big conventions, or at least told like they don't want anything to do with them. Like they yeah. don't have booths here. And then they decided they have their own convention near where Gary Con is. And it, like trying to appeal to nostalgia, but it's a very small area. It's like a this horticultural hall. It only holds like two hundred people or something. So it's like, what are you even doing? That. Yeah, it's like it makes no sense at all. <laughs> and like, like I don't know. So they just they just made everybody mad. But then they start accusing people. They start saying Wizards is out to get us, and it's like it has like this tinge of like fake news. Well, it's definitely that. Justin Lanasa tried to run as a Republican candidate, uh, I think, for Congress. And he got knocked out, I believe, because somebody found footage that he had made on his YouTube channel of women wrestling in a pit in like a, a tub of grits to see who would get a promotion at his business. Oh, grits are gross. <laughs> yeah, well, he was he basically was doing like this hazing thing to see who would get a promotion, like almost like sexual harassment. That's some creeper stuff, honestly. Yeah, yeah. So he got knocked out of this of this election because people were like, "Well, I don't want to vote for that guy." Like, and then you know, and now he's like running this business into the ground that like just started, and uh, th but they're saying like you know, like wizard is like sending people out to get them. And to me, it has sort of this anti-Semitic kind of tone to it, in a sense. And it certainly has this, like, fake news kind of tone to it. Yeah, and... There's so many parallels to a, a certain certain thing. I'm not going to say, but, you know, there's, there's parallels. To what? There's, par there's parallels to, a, you know, you know, certain political figures. Oh, we're not going to, yeah. We're there's not going to get into that, somebody. but I, I can see the parallels with that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so the uh, and then the other thing they started saying is um, uh, it was like the satanic panic. And it's like, no, it's not. It's you made everybody mad by being a jerk and not even running a real business. You're just built on lies, like lies about nostalgia. And now yeah. you're mad that like people don't want to buy it because there's nothing to buy. You don't even have anything to sell. Yeah, exactly. Like, a lot of people are like that. Like, you know, like they act like they act like an idiot on the internet, and then they're like, and they get held accountable for acting like said idiot, and then they're like, "This is cancel culture." Like, it's one of those things. I feel like, like yeah, it's just like yeah. When old, the, some of the real old school people, like Janelle Jaquais and Tim Cask and various other people. James Ward have come out and said like I don't work for this person. They didn't. Tim Cask he edited the original D and D. He edited the magazine for D and D back in the day. I'm yeah. a big fan of Tim Cask. I met him at Gary Con and he was very kind and he did this whole panel and uh I don't know he was just very funny. He was all, like offering people pie and stuff. But, oh, that's a dream. <laughs> but he was like uh you know he said like they didn't even approach me. 
So it's like, what, like, like, get out of here. Like, they're acting like everybody's like, oh, yeah. And it's like, no, you're just <laughs> full of it. Like, get out. Just get out of here. It's, it just seems like a really bad way to, like, handle a company, like, in every way possible. Yeah. It's it's really amazing. It's like a, it, it, like a textbook case of like don't do this. And I feel like like you mentioned with Atari, we're seeing several of these kind of situations happen mm-hmm. where people are just saying, "Oh, people are really nostalgic. They want Langrisser or whatever, or they want like whatever Romance of Three Kingdoms or something." Oh, well, just here, it's like just this game. Like I don't know. It's just like. <laughs> We just put it on a t-shirt or something, and it's eight hundred dollars. It's an, an <laughs> NFT of a t-shirt, so, you know, something just crazy. And it, I don't know. And there is a lot of that problem happening with weird nostalgia stuff, and like this weird, like serious, like commercialization of nostalgia. It's like a big problem. Like it you, is. Like all these people, like I don't want to open a new game because of sealed games. It's like oh, it's wow, Persona you. Five. Is the situation I'm talking about is like Persona 5. This is one of the biggest JRPGs in the world right now over the last few years. Yeah, like, like it might be an Atlas game, but like I don't Atlas is I'm correct me if I'm wrong on this, because you probably know the topic better than I do. Like I'm assuming Atlas isn't doing stupid low runs anywhere, at least not with like Persona. Uh, some of them they do a little bit. I, I don't know exactly how it works. But not but, with Persona 5 though, right? No, not with Persona like, 5. It's a greatest hits title. Like, oh, yeah, there's at least a million copies out there then. Yeah. There's so many copies of it. You know, it's not rare. I mean, Shimagami Tensei 5, I don't think it's going to be rare either. It had all the no. people buying it right away. Like, it's these. That was one of the most hyped up things of the Nintendo Direct when they yeah. revealed yeah. Shin Megami Tensei 5. They're like, oh my God. Like, people, people, like, that series in general, just that series is huge now. Like, yeah, it was. I mean, maybe the early entries are getting up there in price. Like, you like for a copy of, like, jack brothers or like even like the first persona i'm assuming is probably up there oh now. it's bad that's the most expensive ps1 game i don't have North yeah North. like it's just there's so, like all these games that are like really that are de- definitely were limited releases but i feel atlas knows better than to be like you know because they'd be losing money if they only made a limited amount of copies of like persona 5 or shin megami tensei 5 because they, they know those games are huge now and they're gonna sell. They'll they can make a few million copies and they'll probably sell out. You know, it's not gonna be a rare game. And people have this mentality of like, like I've seen people in groups who will like straight up buy two copies of like every game they oh, get every game. just because they're like the value. Like, dude, just you stop worrying about the value. Just have fun with the games. You know, like I mean, I've got I get games all the time, and I've you know I I do have some sealed games like older games that. And I even open some of them sometimes. Like I've like yeah, a, I, I got too. like a I got like a sealed Master System game once, and I was like, I want to play this, so I opened it up because I don't care. I don't care crap about the value because it's just a silly thing. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. I mean, I I get it to an extent, but it what I don't like is the extra emphasis on it and people trading trading people people treating games like it's a stock market yeah, and like. It's not- yeah, and it's like that's like their whole thing with it. Like I can get it. Like you, okay, I have this game. I don't want it. It's worth four hundred dollars or something. I'll sell it. Okay, that's fine. But I don't like. And this has to do with Shimagami Tensei Five. It's, it's like gonna be worth money one day. Well, like the all the people like with the bots buying the stuff too. Like yeah, like and that's why I want to report this stuff because it's nonsense. It's like just get it out of here. You're not even following eBay's rules, and you're just making everything bad for everybody else. It's just. I don't like just stop. Just stop doing that, you know? It's it's a weird it's a weird mindset to have. Like a lot of those like and and for some reason every time I encounter someone like that, it's not just them like low key doing it. Like they feel the need to announce to the world like yeah. I'm going to make money on this. Like yeah. like dude they like brag. I'm going to be honest with you like and this goes for people in the game reselling thing. This goes for people with jobs. Like, no one gives a shit how much you make. No one cares. Like, literally, when you go into a game group being like, yeah, I got, I bought an NES Classic and I flipped it for $100. Literally, no one in that group is going to give a crap about that at all. Like, and these people, like, flaunt it around. Like, it's, like, like, it's some amazing thing. Like, or even, like, 
a lot of some re- certain resellers I know like think that resellers should be like worshipped, like they're like veteran army troops or something. Like, oh, they're doing a service. Like, dude, no, oh, I'm so sick. Price gouging. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's it's like if it was an actual good that was like deemed necessary, like hand sanitizer, or water, or something, it would be like a crime. Here's the thing, though. There are, there do exist good resellers. Like, I've had plenty of experiences, like at game conventions and like at the flea market, where like there be a person there who's just like, who just like, the best ones I've noticed are like guys who just like, like there's this guy at the one flea market I go to. It's a flea market that's an indoor one, so he only really spends there on weekends in this in the winter because you know there's nothing to do in the winter. So basically, what this guy does is. He goes around to like flea markets and antique stores, thrift shops all year round, just looking for cool stuff he likes, like toys and like collectibles, video games. He just mm-hmm. collects stuff that he likes, and then at the end of the season, when it starts to be winter, he's he looks at the stuff he got and he's just like, okay, I'm gonna sell off the stuff I don't care about in this lot. And then he goes to the flea market, he sets up, and mm. every time I've dealt with him, he's cut me a really good deal. If you like buy like you know like a like five games, he'll like basically give you like two of them for free like that's the kind of resellers i like because and he's not asked his prices aren't like just ebay prices it's not like stupid prices it's just like it's very reasonable and uh, i I appreciate i appreciate resellers like that that's cool but what people don't understand the ones who get mad at me when i criticize them i don't like the ones who will like buy like 10 copies of little samson to like lower to like try to artificially raise the demand and raise Uh, the price that's sketchy yeah it's no it's not like something that i want people to think is like cool or good or worthy of praise it's like i mean you you are committing a selfish act right you're just doing it to make more money like it's you're not helping anybody else and it's it's just that you said it's just kind of sketchy it's just it's just bad i don't know like but, I don't uh, care about reselling. I don't care about the hustle. I just I care about the fact that they're literally being dishonest. The fact that I can go to like a game convention, see a copy of like Pokemon Crystal for two hundred dollars, and the guy's like, "Yeah, it's a rare game." Like that's straight up dishonest. That game sold like like five million copies or some shit. It's not a rare game. Like it's just mm-hmm. I'm not. I don't care about. I don't care about your hustle. I care about the fact that. These people are flat out lying to collectors, especially since a lot of these people who are paying those stupid prices are people who got into the game collecting hobby like really recently. So they don't know the the market Mm -hmm. unless they have someone like me to guide them and be like, yeah, that's a bad idea. They're just going to be like, I remember playing Pokemon. Oh, this guy's asking $200. This is the value. Okay, go for it. And that's where it all comes from. You know, and it comes from them being dishonest to these new people who are in the hobby. I want more people in the hobby. That's great. Yeah, it's cool yeah. to have more friends to talk about games with. But the fact of the matter is that these people join the hobby and then these sketchy people are very dishonest with them and make them think that they have to spend like hundreds of dollars on games that sold like 10 million copies. Yeah. Well... Uh, let's get into the next segment here. Here, yeah, we can do that. I was just gonna stop it.